My Lords, I join other Noble Lords in welcoming the Noble Lord, Lord Kane, to his new role. And I note that Northern Ireland, for all its particular issues, when it comes to day-to-day -to -day politics, encounters many of the same problems as your Lordship's house and the other place. I note that last week the Green Member of the Legislative Assembly, Claire Bailey, joined many others in speaking out against the accelerated progress of a finance bill without adequate scrutiny. I note that uh, last week also independent research discredited Edward Poots as exaggerated figures about the costs of a cross-party net zero climate change bill led also by Claire Bailey, which rather reminded me of the, uh, your Lordship's House hearing some e exaggerated figures on sewage costs. Our other Green member of the Legislative Assembly, Rachel Woods, was meeting with the Northern Ireland Youth Forum noting that far more needs to be done to ensure that the voices of young people are heard. And I note that among those things that the Youth Forum has called for is votes at 16, something that young people in Scotland and Wales, of course, are enjoying, and a call that's been backed by the Northern Ireland Commissioner for Children and Young People. So some similarities, yet we also have some real contrasts here, which I think are interesting and possibly have some broader lessons for us. This is the legislation before us is based on a new decade, new approach, an attempt to address the issues with the functioning of the Northern Ireland executive exposed by experience. This is looking at a constitution, seeing a crisis and producing a planned and thought through response. What a contrast to Westminster that is. And of course, it shouldn't need perhaps to a crisis for us to regularly look at a constitution and look at ways in which it might be updated, as the constitution here in Westminster hasn't really significantly been updated uh, since women got the vote. So this is a different way to approach a constitution. Well, at least part of the way of one, because if we look across the border to the Republic of Ireland, there we can see how citizens' assemblies, how people's constitutional conventions showed the way how participatory democracy can actually effectively deal with and settle difficult political issues, as it did on both abortion and equal marriage. The noble Lord, Lord Brown talked about the people being better consulted. Well, I look to the library briefing on this bill, which notes that the New Decade New Deal approach was agreed by the five main Northern Ireland political parties it doesn't talk about consultation with the people. Um, nonetheless, we seem to have, as the noble Lady Baroness Smith of Basildon said, some progress here, not sufficient issues dealt with, but some things being dealt with here. Yet there's many things this bill can't deal with, and the noble Lord the Minister, in his introduction, talked about the need for the economy to meet the needs of society. And the noble Lady Baroness Ritchie of Downpatrick talked about the hit from Brexit, as many other noble lords have, and also the issue of NHS waiting lists and the level of NHS services. I want to add to that a report out today, a truly deeply shocking report from Action for Children, which found that more than a quarter of working parents in Northern Ireland expect to take on extra work or forego time off to be able to pay for Christmas and that most of them will miss at least one key family event in that process. This after last year's Christmas was cancelled by COVID. And of course, an e uh, another report um, a week or so back showed that the £20 cut to universal credit in October, families hit by that, two fifths are likely to cut back on heating, a third are likely to skip meals, and 20% said they expected to go to a food bank. I note that eight out of 18 parliamentary constituencies in Northern Ireland rank in the bottom third of the UK for children living in low-income households, and that the two-child limit with universal credit is particularly acutely felt in Northern Ireland. So, my Lords, we're tackling some constitutional issues there, here, but as the noble Lord the Minister himself acknowledged, there are many other ways in which Westminster needs to provide more support to Northern Ireland uh, to tackle the issues it faces, including constitutional. 